difference between a bird that is plucking and a bird that is pruning. between a bird that is plucking out their feathers and a bird that is preening them. It can be a little tricky to tell if your bird is naturally molting out their feathers or not, but if you know the few little tips and tricks to how a bird actually molts and how they are supposed to be preening, it makes it a lot easier to actually tell if they're being mean to their feathers or not. The first thing you can do when trying to figure out if your bird is plucking their feathers is take a look at the feather that has actually fallen out. So you're going to pick up the feather and you're going to analyze it. What you're going to be looking for is at the very base tip of the feather, the part of it called the calamus, it's basically the little clear part that doesn't have any feather filaments on it that would actually be going into their skin. You want to take a look at that part of the feather and see if it has any damage. A feather that has been naturally molted will have a nice cylindrical calamus that is round, that looks like the quill that you would write with. It'll be nice and solid and there shouldn't be any major damage to it. It might be a little bit flattened if your bird has been nibbling on it, but it shouldn't be frayed and the calamus should be there. If the feather that you're holding is cut off in the middle and it doesn't actually have that part of the feather, odds are the bird did pull it out or just snapped it off and that part of the feather is still in their skin. The issue with this method is that some birds do like to chew on their feathers after they've molted them out naturally. So you might pick up a feather off the ground and have a chewed end and think that they're plucking when in reality they're molting normally and they're just playing with the feather afterwards, which is totally normal. So there are some other ways you can use to tell. The next thing you can do is take a look at your bird. Try and keep a close eye on them when they're actually preening and see how they're behaving. If your bird is preening normally, they should be relaxed, they should be calm and fluffy, and they should kind of be bouncing around their body, not spending too much time in one area. The exception to that is if they have a feather growing in and it's really itchy and they're going to be scratching that area a bit more and they're going to be working and getting that sheath off. Otherwise, your bird should just be calmly running its beak down the ends of its feathers not spending too much time excessively in the middle of it. If your bird is actually plucking when you see them preening, what you'll see happen is them get very obsessed with one spot on their body. They might have a really particularly itchy spot, their skin might be dry, they might actually have an organ that isn't functioning properly, and they end up kind of picking at that one spot trying to relieve that pain. What you're going to start to notice is the bird starts to get a little bit obsessive, they start to get a bit more stressed while they're preening, and they'll thin out a little bit and you'll see them kind of frantically trying to get rid of this itch or this pain or whatever they're experiencing that is causing them to want to pull out this feather. So if your bird is acting a little bit more frantic or they're obsessively focusing on one zone, you may want to take them to a vet and get their behavior analyzed to determine whether or not they're plucking out of habit or out of a health cause. The most notable thing I would use to tell if a bird is plucking is actually symmetry. The way a bird molts naturally is completely symmetrical. If a bird doesn't molt symmetrically and they go to fly, they'll be lopsided and it'll be a lot more difficult. So birds have evolved to do this very fantastic thing where any feather that molts up on the right side of their body will also molt up on the left. They do it for all their wing feathers, they do it for all their body feathers. If they're molting out normally, they should lose the exact same feather on either side of their body. This makes it pretty easy to tell if your bird is going to be plucking or not because if they're molting and all of a sudden you're noticing a patch on one side or there's a thinness to the feathers on one side of their body and the other side is still totally full and fluffy, there's something wrong. Either they're not molting correctly and they need to go to the vet or they are pulling those feathers out. If you've done all those things and you still can't quite figure out whether or not your bird is plucking, the last thing I would recommend would be to actually restrain your bird and take a look at their skin. If you're finding little bits of feathers still in there and just there's broken ends missing off or their feathers are looking chewed and damaged or you're noticing that against the skin it's a little bit bumpier than it should be and you're noticing that some feathers are missing and some feathers aren't, then you know something's up. If a bird is molting naturally, when you pull back some of their feathers and look at the skin, you really shouldn't see anything. You might see a couple small little bumps from where there's a follicle that a feather is supposed to be growing in on, but you shouldn't be noticing the end bits of feathers still in their skin. If they have that there, that means they're pulling their feathers out or they're chewing them at the base. And that can be quite dangerous because that can get stuck in there and it'll have to be surgically removed if the body doesn't happen to molt it out naturally. I always save that method for last because it is very stressful to restrain a bird if they haven't been trained to allow that handling. So if you have a bird that's already potentially plucking out their feathers, you don't really want to restrain them and put them through a more stressful situation where you're manhandling them and separating their feathers to see what's going on. So I always leave that as a last resort simply because you don't want to stress them out more than necessary because that could be the cause for their plucking. Now plucking is a very complicated behavior problem that we actually don't have all the answers to at this point in time. 
There's studies trying to determine if giving them dopamine medications could help with that, and there's behavioral analysts that are trying to sort out all the cause that can come down from stress, to schedule changes, to the wrong color being in their cage. There's all sorts of really tiny things that can cause a bird to become a feather plucker. Plucking is a really difficult behavior problem to handle because it releases endorphins every time they do it. What endorphins are is basically your body's response to pain. It releases this hormone into your body that is telling you to calm down and kind of counteract the pain that the body is experiencing. That can create a pleasurable sensation that's almost euphoric for some people and some animals and can cause it to become addictive. And then it turns into just a bad habit. So even after you've sorted out the cause for the plucking and you've changed all of that, it's entirely possible that the bird can become addicted to the endorphins that are released by doing it and they'll just keep repeating the behavior anyways. So plucking is one of those behaviors that as soon as you see it happening, you need to try and find the cause for it as soon as possible. Otherwise, there might not be a resolution for it. Possibly in the future, we might have medications or better solutions for these things, or some sort of calming things that can be placed around parrots' environments. But at this point in time, we don't. So you really need to make sure that when you see these things or you suspect these things are happening, you're getting your bird to a veterinarian to make sure health isn't a cause, and you're analyzing their behavior and their environment to make sure there aren't any triggers that could be causing this to happen. So understanding all of those little things that can tell you the difference between plucking and preening become incredibly important for figuring out that the behavior is happening and coming up with a plan to help stop the behavior from occurring. I can't tell you why your bird is plucking and I can't really give you solutions for it either because I'm not there, I can't see your bird. It can be any number of things that are causing them to pluck down to someone wearing a hat that they don't like that caused them to be stressed out and started ripping their feathers. It could be that their toys aren't getting rotated enough. They could be not getting enough sunlight. There could be something changing in their environment that they don't like. There could have been a recent move that was stressful. Their diet could be incomplete. They could have a medical condition that needs to be treated. They could have dry skin. There are so many things that can cause a bird to start plucking and it can be really hard to figure out what the cause is. The best way to figure out whether or not your bird is plucking is for you to analyze your specific bird. You can try a thousand one solutions, you can try cones, you can try bath sprays, and none of them are gonna work if you don't actually know the cause for the behavior. Cones can be great for birds that are doing it out of addiction because then it forces them to stop and kind of reset their body's hormones until they hit a point where they realize they don't need to be dependent on it and they can find that enjoyment and that euphoric experience through enrichment in their environments instead of pulling out their feathers. But for most other birds, cones and things don't work to actually stop plucking because it doesn't solve the problem. It just kind of stops the behavior and it's just going to restart up as soon as they have access to their feathers again. So cones can be a helpful tool in the recovery process, but they aren't the recovery in of itself. The best way to actually figure this out after you've gone to the vet and determined that health isn't a problem is to use the ABC method of behavior modification. What this stands for is antecedent behavior consequence. Antecedent stands for something in the environment that precedes the behavior. So a stimulus that might be causing them, a stressor that could be causing things to change, anything that happens prior to the bird actually plucking out the feathers. The behavior itself would be the feather plucking, whatever the bird is doing that is causing stress, whatever is happening that is causing that to happen. And the consequence is whatever happens after the behavior. So what we're going to do to help alter it or what the bird is doing to cause that behavior to continue. So in this instance, the bird is plucking the consequences that it releases endorphins and that behavior is going to repeat. Another consequence could be that the bird is plucking, we're going to alter the stressor that occurred before, and now we're going to put an end to that behavior because we're changing the antecedent situation. So how you would do this is you would make a chart and you're going to go ahead and you're going to log every time that your bird plucks. You're going to analyze what happened prior, you're going to see if anything changed in the environment, if they got fed something different that day, and you're going to want to take note of as many different things as you can that could potentially influence their environment. By the end of two to three weeks, you're, you should have a nice long list that will show you all the things that happened in that environment, all the things that are a typical part of their day, and what sort of things could have potentially triggered it. So if you notice the bird plucked every single time they got a certain vegetable, it could be that an allergy was the cause. If you notice the bird plucked every time a certain person was present, then you can see that that person might be stressful, was that person wearing a certain colored shirt, and you can narrow it down further. By using this method, you can help yourself analyze the situation a lot better and properly come to a solution on what happened. Now, when it comes to a lot of other animals, it's easy enough to hire a trainer for these things. 
you can go and get a dog trainer to help with reactivity, but when it comes to parrots, there aren't very many of us in the world, and it becomes very, very difficult to actually properly figure out the solutions to those behaviors on your own. So going through forums and things can be very helpful because you can contact people who have had those problems before, and you can talk with folks who have had plucking, what helped them, what sort of things didn't work, what the cause for their plucking was, and it can give you more things to consider. No thing in an environment is too small to potentially be a cause for feather plucking, so you need to be taking note of every single little thing. When you're being too broad, you can overlook all the small little aspects that could be a cause for the behavior. So you need to really make sure that you're analyzing things properly, and if you do this whole list once and you don't come down to a solution, do it again and look at different aspects of their environment because there might just be something you're overlooking. The only way to come to a proper solution for feather plucking in most cases is to figure out the proper cause for it. Any of these quick fix cures like the bath sprays and the cones don't actually solve the root of the behavior for most birds. So you need to take the time to properly take a look at the situation and try and come up with a plan to resolve it. It's going to be difficult and it's going to take a very long time to not only establish what the cause is, but then also undo all of the work that the bird's been doing to reinforce their own behavior by plucking and releasing those endorphins in the first place. Plucking is a very difficult behavior to fight, and it's a very long process from start to finish, but once you start getting yourself on the track to finding the solution, then you get the ball rolling and you'll get there before you know it. You just need to stay dedicated and make sure that you're paying close attention to the things that could potentially be triggering your bird. So I hope this helps you guys out a little bit, and I'm so sorry for those of you that are going through birds that are plucking. It is a very terrible thing to deal with. It is so stressful and so strenuous to watch them do these things to themselves when we don't know the reason for it. But I promise you, if you keep at it and you keep trying, you will help your bird eventually. It's just going to take some time for you to figure out what exactly is putting them in this situation where they feel the need to pluck. You just got to keep trying, keep at it, and I know you will get there eventually. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this helped those of you that are having to deal with it, and I hope it helped those of you who don't have plucking birds prepare to make sure that you don't have these things arise in the first place. But that will do it for today's video, so thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye!